Hey guys, it's Jennifer Perkins. Let me get my phone all set up. I said I was gonna talk about how to make almost anything into jewelry today. And by that I mean, if you're familiar with my work from my Naughty Secretary Club days, you know that I tend to use a lot of kind of unconventional things in my jewelry making. I like beads as much as the next guy, but I like using weird, unlikely sourced materials even more. Um, let me see, over here I've got a whole bunch of different stuff that I'm gonna show you, some weird and kooky things. You might have seen this necklace that I talked about on all my promotion stuff. So that's kind of what we're gonna get at. The first thing I want to talk about is the fact that when I used to teach jewelry classes, I would say that there are things that are born a charm, like this. Things that you can see already have a hole. So this guy was made to be a charm. That was his goal in life. He knew it from the moment he was made. So there's those kinds of things. Then there are things like, say, this doll mirror. It wasn't made to be a charm, it was made to be a doll mirror. But if you notice on this side, it's got these little holes. So this is something that could easily be a charm. You don't have to do anything, all you gotta do is put a jump ring in and then there you have a groovy new necklace. Another example is this necklace I made out of a vintage pin cap. It already had a hole here in the tip. So all I had to do was kind of wire wrap it, put a jump ring, I added some charms. So these are the things that I like to say, they didn't know that they were a charm or that they were made for jewelry, but they are. Next are the things that didn't know they wanted to be a charm when they grew up, so I helped them fulfill their secret life goal. There are things like this little couch, this little green couch, which is actually doll furniture. Um, I had a whole series of these kinds of necklaces in my book. I used to always see this doll furniture and I would be like, clearly this green sofa needs to be a necklace. So what I did is I drilled it. So just about anything, you know, size is your only limit. And even for me, size, you can see from my earrings, is not really a limit. Um, here's another fun example I liked. Uh, <laughs> hi, Carrie. Thank you. Um, this little guy just recently broke, which makes me so sad. I've got to fix him. But here's another guy. So he was a baby rattle. You can see he'll ha he had another little strand here. But all I did was drill into his ears. So I made him a charm. He thought he was a baby rattle, but really he is a necklace. So hi, Perla. Okay, so let's talk about how do you get those holes? Like I said, there's things that were already a charm. There are things that didn't know they were a charm, but then you have those unlikely things that could be a charm, but you've got to help them ease into that transition. So there's a lot of different tools you could use. This is called an awl or an owl. I think it's an awl. Um, I miss you too, Perla. I don't do toms anymore, but I do miss you. So here's the awl. It's this pointy little tool. So if you don't have a drill, you probably have something like this around. I use this tool really often when I do things like, here is a picture that I laminated and made into a necklace. It's like a photo of some women that I put on top of this picture of jewelry I cut out. So once I laminated it, it made it into a piece of jewelry, but I still needed to get the holes in. And that's where my all comes in. Hi, Abby, I'm so glad you tuned in. Hi, Michelle. Um, so you poke these little holes in there, and that's how I use my all. Another time that I use it is if I use fabric. These are some iron-on transfers that Chronicle Books put out by an artist named Mike Perry. So I iron these on felt and then back them with some stiffy felt. And so even fabric can easily be made into jewelry under the right circumstances. So I used an awl again to put that hole in there. And then you can see I also set a grommet in there just so the edges didn't look so rough. So even fabric or plastic can be made into jewelry. Um, something I've been into a lot lately, we talked about this on the first video, are these little wood dudes that I keep painting and they are my jam currently. All they are, are those really thin pieces of balsa wood. So in order to make them into jewelry, here's one that I painted kind of abstract. You can see that he has a hole here and here. What I've been using are these little punches. I love these things. 
Can you see it? This one's from Tim Holtz. I got it at Tuesday Morning Stores, but you can get them online. So what you do is you put your little, your doodle in there. Now see, it can't go very deep. And then you go twist, twist, twist. And then over here, this one makes a larger hole than the other. And you can see this one here, it kind of sets in a little deeper. So you could make your hole a little deeper. So these little guys, you just twist it and you can see the little vice thing coming down and it punches the hole out. So these are super handy. I love to have these. Um, another version of these are these by American Crafts. They have these like punch outs. I've not used these, but it's the same concept. And another option, if you need the hole to go further in, is this tool called a crocodile. Um, you know, if you don't hang out in the scrapbook section of your craft store, you are really missing out because there is some good stuff hidden over there. You might think um, that you're not into scrapbooks and maybe you're not and that's fine, but there is some really cool stuff over there. There's cool tools, there's cool findings. I go to the scrapbook section more than anything else. But anyway, this little dude is called a crocodile, and it's like a punch. See, can you see it? See how it's coming down right there? Boom! And it's got several different sizes of hole, so you can put holes again. So I would put that in there, and then I would squeeze it, and I would punch it, and then that is how I would get a hole in those. Okay, let's move on down the lane here. Here is something. Sometimes you put a hole in before you get started. This is a shrinky dink necklace that my sister made and you probably remember from childhood if you want it to be a charm in shrinky dink land you can go back in and drill it later but it's better to punch the holes before you get started and then shrink it so there's that option you could use just a plain old hole punch or the crocodile or any of those things just punch before you cook it okay next let's get on to drills there are dremels this is my cordless dremel my mother always says that if it doesn't plug into a wall it's not a good enough power tool for her but my cordless dremel works there is also this kind of thing from fiskers which is kind of old school but it works and you don't need batteries and if you're like me and forget to charge things like your dremel this is really nice to have on hand because it doesn't have to be charged both of these have drill bits um, for Dremel in particular, if you go to the store, like to the hardware store, there's all kinds of bits. There's big ones, there's little ones, there's masonry ones, there's one specifically for wood. So you want to make sure you have the right bit for the right job. Um, and you know, these little handheld ones and this little battery one sometimes aren't strong enough. Sometimes you really do need the one that plugs into the wall. Like if you're going to do metal, this is a vintage typewriter, uh, ink ribbon 10 and so you probably need a pretty strong drill so again this is one of those things that you know it had no idea that one day it was going to be made into a necklace but clearly it needed to be so I just drilled and then I wire wrapped <clears throat> another one is this guy that we talked about the gnomes now if you're doing something like kind of fragile vintage plastic you need to be sure to go slow and steady, wind the race, you know, just a little like doop, doop, doop. Otherwise you will crack and break this little fella. So, you know, think of, think of those things. If you're using something vintage and fragile, you need to be careful with that. All right, so those are all the ways that I get holes into things. Um, I do have a copy of, sorry video fail. Um, I have a copy of my book here and it has all kinds of things like here are some tiki swizzle sticks that I've made into jewelry. If you're familiar with the book, a lot of the projects I just showed you are in here. Um, it talks all about how to make random things into jewelry, just about anything. I always say if it'll sit still long enough, you can make it into jewelry. So I am going to give away some copies of the book and some copy or some Naughty Secretary Club bling from the old days. I still have stockpiles of jewelry I used to make. So in order to win a copy of the book and a piece of jewelry or two or three, just depending on what I put in your package, uh, it would be great if you shared this video or you left a comment. And then I will pick 10 or so random winners. And hopefully I'll be back next week 
um, with another video. Please leave me comments and let me know what kind of videos you like. Do you like how-tos? Do you like the home tours? Do you want unboxing videos? And in the meantime, I am over on Snapchat at I am Jen Perkins doing quickie little videos pretty regularly all day. I can't promise that they're all good or that I put on makeup or take a shower for them, but luckily you can't smell through video. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it was informative and I hope you go put holes in lots and lots of things now. Thanks for watching. Bye.